In this course, you will learn the basics of reinforcement learning and how to implement it using Gymnasium. Gymnasium is a software library by OpenAI that provides a collection of pre-built environments for reinforcement learning agents. In this course, Mustafa will show you how to use Gymnasium to test and improve your reinforcement learning algorithms. So what will be the objectives of the course? So what we'll be doing is we'll be learning the basics of reinforcement learning and OpenAI Gymnasium. We will learn how to use the Gymnasium interface to interact with different environments. We'll explore various gymnasium environments. So the environments could be like a taxi environment. It could be like a blackjack environment. You can have different Atari games as well. And we'll also understand their characteristics. We'll build and evaluate reinforcement learning agents using gymnasium. Prerequisites, knowledge of Python programming language. So you need to be familiar with basic loops. Uh, what is a class? What are different methods? Also, I'll explain it to you while as we go along. Basic understanding of reinforcement learning concepts. So whatever the uh, topics are that are required, I'll be explaining it to you while we are while we start the course. Introduction to reinforcement learning. What is reinforcement learning? We will learn the RL technologies and also we'll understand the reinforcement learning workflow. The next section is introduction to open air gymnasium. So I'll introduce you to the open air gymnasium and also we will set up the gymnasium environment. And I'll also I'll explain you the basic concepts that are required for using gymnasium. So it could be the environment, agent, observation, action, and reward. The next section is gymnasium environments. So we'll understand the types of gymnasium environments. We'll, we'll understand the difference between continuous and discrete actions and observations. Understanding the properties of different gymnasium environments. And also those are the games, Classic Control, Atari, Box 2D, Robotics. So these are different types of environments available and there are many more available. So Blackjack, we have Taxi Environment, we have Frozen Lake Environment. So now let the next section is the Gymnasium Interface. We'll be interacting with environments using the Gym Interface. We'll understand the Gymnasium API and we'll create some custom environments. Now the next section is Building Reinforcement Learning Agents. So we'll be implementing RL agents using Gymnasium. We'll understand the algorithm, Q-learning. We'll be training and evaluating RL agents using Gymnasium. And we'll be improving RL agents with policy search and other techniques. So basically, we'll be solving Blackjack using Q-learning. This will be the that section. So let me just write it down. Basically, that will be the tutorial. And these are the advanced topics. So after you get a basic understanding of these, of that of reinforcement learning, gymnasium, and solve some solve a problem, then you can go and explore the other advanced topics. So the these are the using open AI baselines for benchmarking RL algorithms. Creating and using wrappers to modify environment dynamics. Combining multiple environments to create more complex scenarios. So we can have two taxis coming at each other. Or you can have multiple players in a poker environment. So basically you can simulate those environments. Also we'll be integrating with other tools such as TensorFlow and PyTorch. Okay, so basically that is the course. Now let's look at the conclusion. So by the end of this course, you will have a very strong understanding of reinforcement learning and open air gymnasium. You will be able to use gymnasium to build and evaluate RL agents and will have a very good understanding of the different gymnasium environments available. This course is an excellent starting point for anyone interested in developing or working with reinforcement learning system. Let's start with the basics of reinforcement learning. Uh, it is a type of machine learning in which an agent learns to make decisions by interacting with an environment. So basically, as you can see here, I have an agent and I have, a, I have an environment. So basically, let's take an example of a, a robot. So what will happen is that the robot, when it takes an action, suppose it takes a step forward. So we will reward, either we will reward the robot for that action or either we will penalize it for the action. So how will we decide that? So what the basic policy would be that 
suppose if the robot takes a step and it bangs into a wall so we will have to penalize it and we will deduct some points for that or if the robot takes a step and it doesn't bang into anything that will be a, a, a good action so we will have to give it some points so this is basically that's what will, what will happen so what is an agent an agent is an entity that interacts with an environment in order to learn how to make decisions that will maximize a specific goal or objective so basically in our case when we have a robot we need it to take something from one place to another place so basically it has to reach the particular endpoint so we will have to train the robot to reach that goal so it will take the decision autonomously as it receives input from the environment performs actions and receives rewards or penalties based on these actions the environment on the other hand is the external system or context in which the agent operates so basically in, in our case everything that is can is uh, nearby to the robot is the environment so basically it could be a warehouse so the full warehouse will be the environment and it will be interacting with the the robot will be interacting with the environment so it can be a simulation a physical system or any other system that the agent interacts with the environment provides feedback to the agent in the form of rewards or punishments which the agent uses to learn how to make better decisions the agent receives feedback in the form of rewards or penalties so as we discussed earlier in the robot case we, when it takes a step forward and it doesn't bang into a wall we will give it a reward and our goal is to maximize the total reward so if it takes a step forward and doesn't bang into anything it will eventually reach the goal so it is a trial and error process observing the consequences and adjusting its behavior based on the rewards it receives over time the agent learns to identify the actions that lead to the highest rewards and avoid those that lead to penalties so as we keep training the robot it will eventually learn what decisions to take autonomously so it adapts to new situations and environments and it will adjust its behavior based on the feedback it receives and improve the performance and it will become efficient decision maker which leads to better performance as well so let's also look at some real world use cases of reinforcement learning so basically the example that we covered is robotics we could perform tasks such as grasping objects navigating and interacting with humans for example rl has been used to train robots to play tennis table tennis where the robot learns to adjust its movement based on the position of the ball so let's look at another example of which is the game playing so like the most famous famous example is of atari games so like deep mind had launched uh, the atari game module reinforcement learning has been applied to game learning particularly in the development of artificial intelligence or we could also talk about blackjack we can talk about chess so a lot of games atari games uh, alpha go a computer program developed by google deep mind uses reinforcement learning to learn to play the game of go at a world class level also we can use reinforcement learning for autonomous driving reinforcement learning can be used to train autonomous vehicles to make decisions in complex and dynamic environments for example reinforcement learning can be used to train a self driving car to navigate through the traffic avoid obstacles and make safe and efficient driving decisions also another uh, very good example is of personalized rec uh, recommendations which is basically netflix or google recommendations reinforcement learning can be used to provide personalized recommendations to user based on their preferences and behavior for example we can use rl to optimize the recommendations of a video streaming service learning what content to recommend to the users and to maximize user engagement and satisfaction so now we have learned about the agent and the environment so now let's move on to gymnasium which is a toolkit that will help us simulate these environments for our agent so basically it is a set uh, or a collection of environments or tasks that can be used to test and de develop reinforcement learning algorithms these environments are typically game like with well defined rules and a reward structure making them useful for evaluating and comparing different reinforcement learning algorithms so what i'll do is i'll head over to the documentation page and show you the different types of environments that are available so this is the introduction page so basically it is just two lines of code to set up an environment and you can interact with the environment as well so i encourage you all to go and check out the documentation and also explore the different types of environments that are available so we have a cart pull environment we have a mountain car 
also interesting environments we have a car racing environment as well so basically for gymnasium there is only one single agent but if you want multi agents then we have another library called petting zoo we have a bipedal walker here and another interesting environments is a blackjack environment so in this tutorial i'll be covering blackjack environment and another environment is a taxi environment so basically this is like our self driving example also we have a frozen lake environment cliff walking these are all the very interesting environments so it could range from games like pong or breakout to more complex simulations like robotics or autonomous driving gymnasium environments are designed to be easy to use and come with a standard interface for interacting with the environment now basically what all steps do we need to start interacting with gymnasium so let's check it out so we need to define the environment that we want to work in we need to create an instance of the environment so that that's what we did here so basically we use gym.make and we use the environment that we want we will define the agent's policy how it decides which action to take interact with the environment taking actions and receiving rewards update the agent's policy based on the reward it receives so just to uh, go back we have uh, an example of a robot so when we take that example and apply these rules we'll be able to interact very easily so let me just show you how we can do that so an environment will be the warehouse environment an instance of the environment will create first we we'll define the policy so in our case the policy was that once the robot takes a step forward and if it does not uh, clash into a wall or doesn't clash into another robot that is a successful step and then we will reward it otherwise we'll have to penalize it so basically this is the fourth step we have to update the agent's policy so what we have to do is we need to update it that once we take a successful step you need to keep taking successful steps and you will yeah, and you will reach the end and we will keep repeating it until our performance is satisfactory let's learn some of the main concepts we will need in open ai gymnasium so the first we have is observation and action spaces and observation space is the set of possible states that an agent can observe in the environment an action space is the set of possible actions that an agent can take in an environment so let's take the example of our robot so what is the thing is that i have my robot right here and the possible actions that it can take is either it can travel in the front or it can travel to the right or to the left or, or take a step back so this is the possible action space that it can take also in this case the observation space will be right here so it will be 5 6 7 so action space is different than the observation space this is the full action space and the observation space will be we will change it up this is the action space this is the observation space let's look at episode an episode is a complete run through of an environment starting from the initial state and continuing until a terminal state is reached so let's look at that in our example as well so i have my robot right here and i want it to reach here so this would be an episode and i can train the robot to run multiple episodes so it will start at a particular position and it will reach this terminal position so that will be one episode it will start here and could go here as well So basically, this could be a terminal location, or it could this could be the start location, and this could be the terminal location. So these are all the different episodes that we have. Now each episode is composed of sequence of states, action, and rewards. Wrapper. A wrapper is a tool in OpenAI Gym that allows you to modify an environment's behavior without changing its code. So we'll look into that later on. Wrappers can be used to add features such as time limits, reward shaping, and action masking. Benchmark. OpenAI and Gym provides a set of benchmark environments, which are standardized tasks that can be used to evaluate and compare reinforcement learning algorithms. So, if we have multiple algorithms for a particular environment or a problem, we can use the benchmark to 
compare them. We are done with the basics of reinforcement learning and also we have learned the agent environment and everything that is needed to get started. So now let's implement the game of blackjack uh, using gymnasium. First, let's get uh, introduced to the game of blackjack. So what are the basic rules? So the basic rules is that I need, I have, I will have two cards and the dealer will have two cards. Now in this uh, scenario, both will be AI players. So the thing is that uh, at each turn, I will have to decide that I need a new card or do I want to keep my current set of cards. But the dealer has to keep playing until he uh, until the he reaches over 17, the sum of the card reaches over 17. And if I have to win, I need to be a bigger number than uh, my sum of the cards have to be greater than the dealer's cards. So let's go over all the basic rules of blackjack. This game is played with one or more decks of standard playing cards. Each dealer is dealt two cards and the dealer is also dealt two cards with one card face down. The value of each card is determined by its rank. Aces can be worth 1 or 11. Face cards, king, queen and jacks are worth 10. And all other cards are worth their face value. Players have the option to hit and take additional cards to improve their hand or stand and keep their current hand. The dealer must hit until their hand has a value of 17 or more. If a player's hand goes over 21, they bust and lose the game. If the dealer's hand goes over 21, the player wins the game. If neither the player nor the dealer busts, the hand with the highest total value that is less than or equal to 21 wins. So basically these are the rules. Now let's head over to the gymnasium documentation and check out how blackjack is implemented. So here we are in the gymnasium documentation. Now let's check out the action space and observation space here. So basically we need to import blackjack v1 to create the blackjack environment. Yeah, this is the rules that we discussed. Now action space. The action space is one comma in the range of 0, 1 indicating whether to stick or hit. So it's uh, the player's decision but the dealer has to keep playing. The observation consists of three tuple containing the player's current sum, the value of the dealer's one card, 1 to 10 where 1 is ace and whether the player holds a usable ace, 1 or 0. So basically this will be the observation space. Our starting space will be 4 between 4 and 11 dealer card has 2 and 11 and other usable yes if i have a usable way or not what will be the rewards in this particular reinforcement learning problem so we'll have win game as plus 1 lose game as minus 1 draw game is 0 and win game with natural backjack plus 1.5 if natural is true and plus 1 if natural is false so basically this is another type of set that is the natural environment so basically we can understand that so if natural is true whether to give an additional reward for starting with a natural backjack that is starting with an ace and 10 so we can specify that when we set up the environment now let's see how we can implement it in uh, google collab so now we've covered the basics of blackjack now let's understand how we can solve this game of blackjack so well, let's first discuss a book that is very popular regarding to blackjack. It's called Reinforcement Learning and Introduction by Richard Sutton and Andrew Bartow. It covers the basic applications of reinforcement learning and also there is a chapter on blackjack and it also covers other games. And they have modeled it a Markov decision process and how every action influences the outcome of the game. Now also they explain how reinforcement learning algorithms can be used to learn optimal policies for playing backjack based on maximizing the expected return over the long term. So now this feels very complicated but I, uh, as this is the beginner course you do not need to learn this. Once this course is over and you still have a curiosity you can go check out this book. And because uh, why should you check out this book because it presents several approaches to solving the blackjack problem including Monte Carlo methods and temporal difference learning. It also covers value functions and policy improvement, which are a very uh, advanced topics. So maybe we will create a course on that. But as this is a beginner course, you do not need to know all these. So let's start with the basic implementation. 
what I'll be doing is I'll be importing the libraries that we will be needing. So let's do pip install. So I'll be copying this multiple times. Yeah, let's do matplotlib. Then let's do numpy. Seaborn. So basically, numpy is used for data manipulation. So as we import, I'll just explain to you when we import what each library is used for. TQDM. We have in gymnasium. Gymnasium equal to equal to zero point two seven dot zero. So basically, this is the LTS support, long term support version. And let's do matplotlib inline. So as you all know. When matplotlib is used, it opens a new window, but in Colab, Google Colab, there is no window. So basically the plots should be inline. So basically we'll do this percentage matplotlib inline. So it will show all the plots below the cell. So yeah, it's done. Let's do pip install. Yeah, so I already have it installed, but in my machine, it will take some time to install. By, uh, till it get installed, let's also import all the necessary methods that we will need so from collections i will import default dict so why i am using a default dict is because uh, it allows us to uh, access keys without checking that if the value is accessed uh, if value exists from import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt so this is, I just also write down why we'll be using this. Allows access to undefined keys, the keys that do not exist. So it will check for us instead of us having to always check if that key exists, it will just check it for us. So we'll be using this for drawing plots from matplotlib.patches. So basically this is for creating shapes. So draw shapes. Now let's import numpy. So as numpy is very popular, so basically numpy is for array manipulation and image manipulation data and array manipulation let's do import seaborn seaborn is a very popular data visualization library as sns and from tqdm so basically this is for a loader so whatever uh, training that happens it will show it as a loader so it will be very easy to understand the training progress so I think we have completed the installation of the basic libraries. Now let's so let's so what I'll be doing is I'll be using the gym dot make command to create our environment. So it will be env is equal to gym. So I have already imported the gymnasium. Okay, I forgot to import it. Let me import it as well. So from import gymnasium as gym now let's do gym dot make so our environment name is blackjack v1 blackjack v1 and what i'll be doing is i'll be setting the sab parameter to true what is sab parameter it is like the natural environment basically the default state of certain and the book that we discussed so what I'll be doing is, and also I'll be setting the render mode is equal to RGB gray because I'll be showing you the training uh, states. So exactly what is the position of the card at that particular moment in training. So that will be interesting to watch. So that is why I'll set this render mode to RGB array. Now let's go and see how we can set up the environment. Of, so how we'll be observing the environment. What I'll be doing is I'll be setting this as let's observe the environment yeah so we'll be using 
the env dot start method to observe an uh, episode so basically we discussed what is an episode it is basically uh, all the steps that it takes for me to reach from the starting point to the end point once so basically that is an episode and for uh, setting an episode we do it as observation comma info is equal to env dot reset so basically we use the reset method to uh, reset the full board or reset the particular environment and we'll be keeping done as first because we have just started the training so let's do let's add some comments reset the environment get the first observation so and what will be the output of this so observation is equal to it is a tuple and as we have discussed this before it will be 16 9 and false so what is this tuple so basically this is my hand what i have been dealt this is the dealer's hand and this is the number of uh, if do, uh, do i have an ace so i do not have an ace at the start so that is why i have got the output as false so it will it is a boolean and uh, it is like uh, the this value represents that if i have a ace usable without busting so yeah that is the thing i can have an ace but i can also bust as well so this is a an ace which is usable and without busting so let's write that down as well so what is this, this output let's write Yeah, this is a tuple consisting of three values. So the first value is the player's current sum. The second will be value of dealer's face up card. The third will be boolean whether the player holds holds a usable ace and what is a usable ace where it is usable if it counts And without busting basically that is it. Well, let's see how we can execute that so for executing an action first we'll receive our first obs observation so basically that will be the starting space we will be going to uh, then after that we'll be using the env dot step and we'll be giving the action to interact with the environment so in if we take an example of the blackjack it will be that if i want to uh, take a new card or do i want to keep my current set of cards that will be passed in the action this function takes an action as an input and executes it in the environment because that action changes the state of the environment it returns four useful variables to us these are next state this is the observation that the agent will receive after taking the action it will also give us the reward the agent will receive after taking the action either this environment has terminated or it will give us truncated that if the episode ended early or, or the time limit is reached this is a dictionary that contains additional information about the environment the next state reward terminated and truncated variables are self-explanatory but the info variable requires some additional explanation this variable contains a dictionary that might have some extra information about the environment but in blackjack v1 environment you can ignore it for example in atari environments the info dictionary has ale.lives key that tells us how many lives the agent has left if the agent has zero lives then the episode is over so basically these are the four values that are important after we take a step so let's see how we can take a step now so let's take a new cell and let's take the action so action is equal to env dot action underscore space dot sample yeah 
now what is this so this is a sample action that we will be taking sample a random action basically this is the training loop so that's why we are taking a sample action all valid actions now we have hash action is equal to one and what we'll do is we'll execute execute the action so basically how we will be executing it so we'll be taking observation so we discussed all the parameters here right so we'll be taking the, all the four parameters we'll be having reward we'll be having terminated truncated and info so we can in, ignore info but i'll be taking info just in case step and action so action is the sample action from here so execute the action also we'll be receiving info and receive info after taking it after taking the step so what will be the output if we run this so the sample output will be observation is equal to so basically we have learned what this tuple means so this is the 24 this is my current sum so basically i have gone bust now also first so i do not have any usable basically this is just a sample start so i have some values here so i'll explain to you all these values so and reward is equal to minus 1.0 so basically i have lost so terminated will be true is equal to true we have truncated false and hash info is equal to blank so yeah this this is how it's going to be for this particular one sample step so once we get ter uh, terminated is equal to true what do we do then the current episode we have to reset so if terminated i had to take a text terminated is equal to true or yeah we should stop the current episode and begin a new one using env.reset so basically i've talked about this method before as well so yeah this is what this is a single action that we take in this particular environment now let's build our agent So now we have completed the basic setup of the environment and our agent. Now let's understand the approach that we'll be using to solve Blackjack. So let's look at the Epsilon DD strategy. This is a very optimum strategy to solve Blackjack. So let's understand it. In this strategy, the agent takes an action that is either the best action based on the current policy with a probability of 1 minus Epsilon or a random action with a probability of Epsilon. This approach balances the exploitation of the current best policy with exploration of new policies which can lead to better rewards in the long term. So basically it is a very uh, strict policy either I take the current best policy okay, current best approach uh, or action or either I take a random action. So how we will uh, set the policy let's let's look at that later but let's understand the epsilon greedy strategy. In the context of blackjack, the epsilon greedy strategy can be applied to determine whether the player should hit or stand. At each step of the game, the agent, that is the player, can choose to take the action that is either recommended by the current policy or it is a random action. The policy is learned over time by updating the action value estimates of each state action pair based on the rewards received during the game. As the game is played repeatedly, the agent learns the optimal policy that maximizes the expected reward. So basically, uh, we as we keep on running uh, the the iterations and the agent keeps learning, it will understand the optimum policy that will maximize our expected reward. Initially, the agent may explore by taking random actions to discover new strategies. However, as the game progresses, the agent will start to exploit the best known policy which should maximize the expected reward over time. So this is the approach that we'll be using. 
Now let's build our agent using this approach, the epsilon greedy strategy approach. So let's take a code cell and create our class. So basically we'll create a blackjack agent class and let's do def. So we'll define the initial constructor that is the default constructor and what all parameters do we need for this. So we will take the self parameter, we'll take learning rate. So basically this will be passed as epsilon it will be a float let's take initial epsilon it will be a float as well let's take epsilon decay this will be a float as well let's take final epsilon This will be a float as well and let's take the discount factor we float and this will be 0 0.95 in this case so we have completed the initial constructor let's move ahead and create our uh, initial let's complete the initial constructor q underscore values is equal to default dict. So we will be using default dict because we do not want to always check if that key exists. It will be a lambda method, lambda function, np dot zeros. Yeah, so we can just initialize it as np dot zeros. Let's set it at env dot action space dot n. Now let's write some comments as well just for explanation so what are we going to do here we are going to initialize our rl so uh, whenever i say rl it is a it is reinforcement learning agent with empty dictionary of state action values this is the q values learning rate and an epsilon all the arguments let's understand all the arguments as well so we'll be calculating the learning rate so i think these are pretty self uh, explain, explanatory let me just explain to you the discount factor so the learning rate is the learning rate itself the initial epsilon value epsilon decay is the decay for epsilon and this will be the final epsilon value and the discount factor is something that needs to be understood so let's understand the discount factor the discount factor for computing the q value so i'll explain to you what the q value is let's just first complete the basic class of our agent value so this is the approach that we are going to be using using q learning so solving blackjack using q learning so now let's complete our constructor so basically this is the learning rate self dot discount factor is equal to discount factor Let's do self dot epsilon is equal to initial factor. No, self dot epsilon is equal to initial epsilon. My bad. Let's do self dot epsilon decay. Is equal to epsilon. This is one single equal. self dot final epsilon equal to final underscore epsilon let's do the training errors as well training error is equal to blank array now let's create another method that is the get action method yeah. 
basically i need to complete the indentation let's do that let me complete the indentation It will indent it once more. Yeah, and this looks good. This is the tuple that we discussed, the observation tuple that we'll be getting. So this is intent bool, and the output will be an integer. So this will be the get action method where we'll define the policy. So if np dot random dot random will be doing two random is less than self dot random self dot epsilon so i think uh, i made a mistake here i need to do return env dot action underscore sample so we'll be taking the sample action instead of taking the correct action yeah else if the probability is, is good enough let me take the return of int np dot argmax self dot q values so basically this is the q values that we'll be using here so i'll explain to you in just some seconds let me complete all the methods here so let's just give it some parameters here basically this is this will return returns the best action with probability one minus epsilon epsilon otherwise random action with probability for exploration so yeah this is the basically the approach that we understood before ensure exploration so yeah, this is done let's create uh, another method first explain to you what uh, the q value is so basically let me just write it down here so the q value function is used to estimate the optimal action to take in each state the optimal action in a state is the one it is the one that maximizes the expected long term reward so basically we have understood the epsilon approach so basically this is how we will be maximizing it now this is a bit complicated the equation there is a arg max which will return the maximizing value so i uh, encourage you guys to go and just understand the logic behind it it's pretty complicated but it me this is basically the optimal action that we have to take in each step basically this will be calculated for us in our in our game so yeah let's let's move ahead now we need to complete the uh, update method so let's complete that we have our def update and it will have self we have observation basically this is the observation tuple so, the tuple. so like yeah I, I might be having some <laughs> errors so when we compile it we'll get to know all this action int let's do reward reward float let's do terminated boolean and do next observation as again a tuple int bool so this will be the next observation so we understood what the queue function is. So basically, we'll be updating the queue function. So let's understand it. Future queue value is equal to not terminated 
into np dot max self dot q values of next observation so we'll be taking the q value of the next observation and multiplying it with the terminating method so if it is terminated then we have to start again if it is not then we do not we do not need to calculate this is equal to so we have the reward basically this is the method that is the function i will also explain it to you how we calculate it so count factor into future q value minus basically this is the literal formula that we use to calculate it so i'll explain it to you just let's go ahead and complete this method observation of action so yeah this is done the q method q value is done let's do the training but now we need to update the q value now so we have completed the difference now let's do the self dot q values of observation and of the action 2d array is equal to self dot q values basically this is what we have to do again q the score values so i'll be copying this right here this is what we have to do plus self dot lr so this is the learning rate into the temporal difference and this will be self dot training error error dot append temporal difference so yeah it's done now let's complete the last method the, D, the dk epsilon comma self dot epsilon minus epsilon dk so basically we have completed our class blackjack agent so now we have completed the class of our agent so we have basically defined all the actions that the agent can perform now let's see the training of the agent so let's start the training we will be training it one episode at a time so let's do the parameters first so first we will keep the learning rate 0.01 this is the learning rate we have the episodes equal to 100,000 episodes so we can change it like I'll just keep it 100,000 because that will give us a very good trained agent but I will just reduce it for the tutorial this is the standard that we should keep if you want to create a real world agent. So let's do epsilon dk equal to start episodes by 2. So we will reduce the exploration over time. We wanted to take the appropriate path without having to explore too much so this will basically reduce it and then we have the final epsilon basically this is where we need to get by the end of the training let's create our agent this is this or these are all the parameters the hyperparameters parameters now we have agent is equal to we have the agent is equal to black jack agent learning rate learning rate we have the initial basically you can just copy from here okay integrate it is equal to start start epsilon is 1 and basically we need to get to 0 0.1 from 1 now we have epsilon decay is equal to epsilon decay let's pass that 
now also let's give it the final epsilon yeah so this is the agent that we have initialized so now let's turn the training let's turn to training now so basically we have completed the agent setup now now let's start the training so what i'll do is i'll just set up the environment basically env is equal to gym dot wrappers dot record so we will be recording all the statistics and i'll just show you after the training how the agent improves over time so we'll be plotting some charts as well so let me complete the training part first and then we'll talk about what uh, the training has how the training has improved over time and what kind of all the statistics would mean so we'll be plotting charts and also i will give you the statistics so we have n episodes n episodes okay so it will be recording the statistics for episode now let's do that so we have uh, 100000 episodes let's make it 10 for this tutorial just so that it will run fast and also i will also output the uh, the environment at particular point so i will uh, so every time that a card is dealt or anything that a decision is made by the agent we'll be plotting that particular uh, environment and see the what is happening in real time so i'll be doing that as well so it's like watching live play live poker in real time live blackjack in real time so let's do that let's let's do that now we do env dot reset now why do we do env dot reset because as we discussed after every episode we need to reset the environment because i have traveled from one point to another point i need to reset the environment now okay let's do done is equal to false because we need to complete the challenge we need to get to the uh, end point let's do clear output now i need to import so what i'll be doing is for every episode uh, i will be clearing the output because i am i am only interested in the current episode and what is happening right now in real time so i'll import i python display import clear output basically this is what i need to import so basically for every episode this will clear the output now let's complete the training for one episode this will be play one episode let's do while not done so this is false so while we are not done let's run this loop let's do action is equal to agent dot get action of observation let's do next underscore obs comma reward comma terminated so this is all the information that we will get after making a particular step this will be truncated this will be info equal to env dot step let's update now let's do agent dot update so we'll be passing all these parameters so we have to pass observation action reward terminated and the next position next observation mistake frame so basically i will be rendering the frame so at particular instance what is happening we can just output that as well so i'll be doing that yeah frame is equal to env dot render i'll do plt dot i am show frame for from iplot i'll be showing you the exact location of the cards and exact position of the cards and exactly what is happening in real time now what we have to do is we have to check if that uh, episode is terminated so how will we know that we'll have a parameter called terminated or we have truncated so truncated is that we have a bust or terminated is that the time limit is over so observation is equal to next observation and we have to do agent so oh yeah, outside the follow we need to do agent dot dk epsilon so over time it will get smarter huh? so yeah this is it so i'll be using uh the package called annotations because i'll be using subscripts in my methods so i got an error here now let's run it and check again so if you are also getting an error make sure to import the package annotations now everything should run fine yeah let's wait yeah so basically this is another error basically this is like running rate is not defined so it is Learning rate, learning rate.
which is defined so why it is saying that it is going to bind okay it should be equal to basically these things happen <laughs> yeah this runs fine now let's try this yeah perhaps you meant equal to equal to where is that here let's see what i can do record episode so it is env comma not dot and uh, basically this thing happens so like yeah i can't do anything so there is nothing in the gymnasium dot wrappers so it is wrappers not wrapper also as no attribute record episode statistics so it is happy episode yeah so basically this is the uh, yeah this episode statistics here that yeah it's, it's a lot of mistakes here yeah now it will i think it will run name op is not defined so this is not ob this is our obs this is the observation space yeah now we're going to attempt to add episode when they already exist so let's see why that happens everything is done let's run everything so you run all now if you get some errors just make sure to check out the indentations or i'll just link my google colab notebook in the description you guys can go and check it out because there were a lot of indentation issues before running it so yeah now that's it so as you can see for every episode we are able to visualize it so it is 20 21 So if it is a twenty one, then it's a draw. If both have twenty one, you will see it is twelve. So it's pretty fun to watch. Hmm. So now currently I have set the episode as one hundred thousand. I can change it and keep it as ten, but I'm just gonna let it train. So once that is done, I'll just come back and let's just uh, visualize the training part then, because we need to understand the error losses and we need to understand the uh, policy that we have used. while this is running let's just complete the visualization code so what i'll be doing is we do rolling len so we'll be understanding all the parameters and all the data relating to our policy and understand what is the appropriate amount of episodes that we can use and also the loss function we'll plot it and we'll understand its trajectory as well so let's do that so what i've done is i've set the rolling length is 500 and i have done the figure size here so i let me just complete the code and i'll explain to you everything what we have done so yeah i'll just give it as 5 this is sub plots not sub plots so yeah this is done now let's do access of you know that set title so that we'll just get the title as episode rewards so what how does the reward change in each episode we have plotted let's plot that episode rewards So yeah, now let's do reward. The score moving. The score average equal to np dot convolve. So I will will plot the convolve graph. Let's do np dot array env dot return q dot flatten. So we'll flatten it. Dot flatten. Dot comma np dot ones rolling length and let's do mode is equal to valid and let's do rolling length divided by rolling length. So this will be for every five hundred iterations we are doing this. Now this is completed. Let's do axis of zero dot plot range. Len reward moving average this is the moving average of the reward now what i'll be doing is i'll be plotting it against the reward moving average so yeah the exact value This is the values here, so we are going to plot it. Now let's do axis of one. So this is the y-axis. Got set title, episode length, the set
so lengths this is done let's do length underscore moving underscore average this will be our variable let's it will be the same we'll do a convolution we'll do np dot convolve so i'll explain to you why we use the convolve method as well So basically this is it we need to do dot flatten yeah, this is dot flatten then we need to do np dot once rolling length again and more is equal to same so instead of valid we'll do same now let's do dot dot and we'll do same close the brackets divide this by rolling length dot plot range length training error moving average where it will stick so yeah we have it above training error score moving the score average comma training underscore error underscore moving underscore average so this is it let's do plt dot tight layout so basically i have completed the training uh, visualizing of the training parameters and how the graph looks like so what i'll do is i'll just wait for the training to complete and then i'll explain to you the graph so the training is complete now let's look at the different parameters that we have plotted so they have three different types of charts let's understand each one of them so first one we have is episode rewards so the episode rewards in our case of solving blackjack an episode is a can be defined as a game of blackjack played from start to finish and the episode rewards is the total sum of the rewards obtained during that game it could be the sum of the numbers of wins and losses and we can add any bonuses or penalties for certain actions so as you can see uh, for each episode there is a very drastic change in the rewards so basically this is very interesting to watch that this it is not a flat line basically we do not have any range bound movement between it it just uh, just is too volatile it just keeps changing so see, this is very interesting to watch so now let's look at the episode lengths compared uh, which is plotted against each episode so basically this is one uh, complete sequence of playing a hand taking a hit or a stand and receiving the result now the length of an episode would depend on the rules of the game the number of players and other factors so in our game it could be just two players but you can have more number of players as well and uh, in a game of blackjack you could consist of uh, it would consist of a single hand or multiple hands with different lengths of each episode so basically you can see uh, in our case it would be more than one only but it, it doesn't go over two, so basically we are confined between 1.4, 1.3, basically 1.3 and 1.4. So uh, each episode is just between 1.3 and 1.4. So that is also very interesting to watch. Let's look at the training error. The training error is a measure of how well a model is performing on the training data. Now, in the, our context of solving blackjack using Q learning, the training error would be difference between the expected value of the Q function and the actual Q values obtained during the training. The goal of Q learning is to minimize this error and converge to optimal Q values that maximize the expected reward. A high training error indicates that the model is not learning effectively and adjustments may be needed to the algorithm or training data. So as you can see at around 3000, around 3000, this is pretty good. Our training error is pretty low. Now after 3000, it goes pretty high. So that's it. Now we are done with our training of the blackjack agent and we have uh, successfully solved the blackjack uh, game using the Q learning algorithm. Now let's quickly revise all the things that we have learned while we solve when we started solving blackjack. 
so we started with the reinforcement learning basics then i also explained to you the role of an agent what exactly constitutes an environment what each action is and how do we keep track of each action each state that the agent is currently in then we also learned about the observation aspect and also how we use rewards to keep track of a successful step and also give penalty to the agent when it makes a wrong step so basically we have covered that then i also explained to you the real world use cases of reinforcement learning we so basically there is robotics game playing autonomous driving personalized recommendations then we started by uh, with the gymnasium library basically it gives us a collection of environments that can be used to test and develop reinforcement learning algorithms so here we have made use of the blackjack environment then we started with the setting and we started the setup for the gymnasium environment also i have walked you through all the processes that we need to successfully solve any problem so this is true for any reinforcement learning problem then i also explained to you the main concepts of open ai gymnasium so we started with observation and action spaces episode what is a wrapper benchmark now we start with the introduction to the blackjack game so basically here are the basic rules the game is played with one or more decks of standard playing cards each player is dealt two cards and the dealer is also dealt two cards with one card face down the value of each card is determined by its rank aces can be worth 1 or 11 face cards that is kings queens and jacks are worth 10 and all other face cards are worth their face value and basically we have the option to hit and take additional cards to improve our hand or stand and keep the current hand the dealer must hit until their hand has a value of 17 or more if a player's hand goes over 21 they bust and they lose the game if the dealer's hand goes over 21 the player wins the game if neither the player nor the dealer busts the hand with the highest total value that is less than or equal to 21 wins the game so this is an example or now we have learned about the action space the observation space the starting space about the rewards and how, what constitutes an episode and how does an episode end so we have the termination conditions here now we have started with the solving of blackjack i have also introduced you to a very good book that is reinforcement learning and introduction by richard sutton and andrew bato basically this is the uh, summary of the book now we started with the installing of the so basically we have started with the installing of all the gym, uh, of the all the libraries that we need for the tutorial so there is matplotlib numpy cborn then we started with our import statements so we have imported all the libraries that we need now here we is where we have created our blackjack v1 environment then we have reset the environment and started with the first observation then we have the observation tuple so basically this is the tuple now then we start executing the actions we have the next state reward terminated state truncated state and the info basically this is the step now we have used the epsilon greedy strategy to solve blackjack so what is the epsilon greedy strategy in this strategy the agent takes an action that is either the best action based on the current policy with a probability of 1 minus epsilon or a random action with a probability of epsilon this approach balances the exploitation of the current best policy with exploration of new policies which can lead to better rewards in the long run basically this was the epsilon the strategy that we use also i have explained to you the uh, what is the q value so this is the class for our blackjack agent we have all the methods we have the get action method update method now we started with the training so we have set up some hyperparameters here i have also explained in detail what each parameter does so you can just play around with these now we start with the training loop we have the episode we have created a number of episodes now we what we do is while not done we play the episode and basically this is an error i got <laughs> so we started with the rolling length so this is the plotting of the graphs that we did here so this was the code for that and also i explained to you the uh, all what 
uh, all the graphs that we have plotted here. So now we have solved blackjack using Q learning. Also, now let's look at some other methods that we can solve blackjack. So the first one is Monte Carlo method. Monte Carlo is a mod model free method that learns from experience. In the context of blackjack, Monte Carlo methods involves playing the game several times and keeping track of the rewards obtained for each action. The agent then updates its value function based on the average of the rewards obtained for each state action pair. Monte Carlo methods are suitable for problem like episodic tasks like blackjack. So you can use gymnasium and try this approach as well. Now let's look at the other approach. Temporal difference method. It is another model free method that learns from experience. In the TD learning, the agent updates its value function based on the difference between the predicted and the actual reward. TD methods are suitable for problems with continuous tasks like blackjack. Uh, Q learning is something that we've already solved blackjack, but let's just uh, quickly revise what's Q learning. Q learning is a model free reinforcement learning algorithm that learns the optimal policy by updating its Q values for each state pair. The agent selects the action with the highest Q value for a given state. Q learning is suitable for problems with finite states and actions like blackjack. The fourth method that we have is deep Q networks. So basically, we'll be solving so in the next. Uh, uh, example, we will be uh, solving card poll problem that is like an Atari game where you have to balance the card poll and we will be using deep Q networks. So I will also uh, explain in detail what are deep, deep Q networks. So let's look at the brief. Deep Q networks combine reinforcement learning with deep neural networks. DQNs learn the optimal policy by approximating the Q values using a deep neural network. DQNs are suitable for problems with high dimensional state spaces like image based games. So it's like an image. So these are suitable for image based games. Now the fifth example that we have is actor critic example. Actor critic is a model based reinforcement learning algorithm that uses the two networks an actor and a critic. The actor network selects the actions while the critic network evaluates the actions taken by the actor. Actor critic is suitable for problems with continuous action spaces like blackjack. So these are all the different approaches that you can use to solve blackjack and I highly encourage you all to use gymnasium and try these approaches. So you will find uh, you, will, you will have to use some math for that. Also, you will find that online as well. But uh, these are the different approaches that you can use. So now let's go to another example where uh, we'll be using the environment of the card pool. So now let's understand what 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 is the card pool environment, and then we'll understand about deep Q networks. So in the card pool environment, we have an agent that can decide two actions: moving the card right or moving the card left, right or left. So the pole attached to it stays upright. So as you can see in this uh, clip, we have to balance the pole. And these are can be random actions, so it could just tilt left twice, or it could uh, go to the left five times, and it could go to the right once. So we need to have all the possibilities covered here. You can find more information about the environment at the gymnasium website. So uh, I have also linked the website link here. Now let's uh, look in detail. As the agent observes the current state of the environment and chooses an action, the environment transitions to a new state and also returns a reward that indicates the consequences of the action. In this task, rewards are plus one for every incremental time step and the environment terminates if the pole, if the pole falls over too far or the cart moves over 2.4 units away from the center. So basically, we do not have allow, we cannot allow the pole to fall 2.4 units away from the center. And uh, for every incremental time step, we will have plus one reward. So we have to maximize the number of time we can balance this card pole. This means better performing scenarios will run for longer duration, accumulating larger return. The card pole task is designed so that the inputs to the agent are four real values, representing the environmental state, position, velocity, etc. We take these four inputs without any scaling and pass them through a small fully connected network with two outputs, one for each action. The network is trained to predict the expected value for each action given the input state. 
the action with the highest expected value is then chosen so now let's look uh, in detail like how we can implement this network as well now let's look at all the methods that we'll be using from pytorch so the first is the neural networks which is uh, imported using torus.nn now in general this model provides tools for building neural networks it includes a wide range of layer type wide range of layer types such as fully connected layers convolutional layers and recurrent layers as well as activation functions and loss functions now let's look at in perspective of a dqn the torch.nn model is used to define our neural network architecture now let's look at the other method that is the optimization method now this module provides a range of optimization algorithms for training neural networks it includes classic optimization algorithms such as stochastic gradient descent as well as more advanced algorithms like adam and rms prop but let's look at in context of the dqn we'll be using torch optimization module to optimize our neural uh, our network weights now next is torch dot autograd this model now uh, this model in the context of dqn is used to compute gradients during back propagation this module provides automatic differentiation functionality, which is essential for training neural networks via back propagation. It enables PyTorch to automatically compute gradients of a loss function with respect to all the parameters of the network, allowing optimization algorithms to adjust the parameters in order to minimize the loss. Now let's import the modules that we need. So the first is the gymnasium classic control. Let's import that. Basically, that con uh, that contains the model that we need, the card pole v1 model. Let's install that. Pip install gymnasium classic underscore control. This is the name. So now let's also import all the other methods that we we'll need. So let's import import gymnasium as gym. Import math. So basically, these are all the inbuilt models. Math is inbuilt. Let's do a random. Random also is inbuilt. Put matplotlib. This chatting library. Plotlib. It's used for making charts. Let's import matplotlib dot pyplot splt this is i think one of the most <laughs> common code line in python <laughs> code name tuple and deck so basically we'll be using these data structures to manage the training python tools import count these are we'll be using this now let's import all the torch modules for torch import torch.nn as nn let's do torch.optim as optim import torch.nn dot functional functional as f now let's also create our environment. So we really, this will be gym dot make card pool card pool v1. Now also let's uh, set the inline uh, setting for matplotlib inline in at plot lib dot get i think i forgot to import yeah so let's let's write that code with well. because i think we can directly make it inline no issues if it is we are in collab if we are in google collab we want pyplot plot to be plotted as inline so that will be displayed below the cell so yes let's do if is i python so basically this is google collab again from ipython input display because we need the display to display the charts 
there is a plt dot ion also if you do not have a gpu we can just add a condition as well and if you do have a gpu then we can increase the training so let's set the variable if we have a gpu like this cuda is torch dot cuda dot so basically this is the method to understand if we do have a gpu available and you can just go to settings in tools you need to go to settings in the google editor i think in the runtime i think you need to send it to runtime yeah so it will be changed runtime time and you can just add a gpu here. so i will do that i'll do that as well so it will basically give us a lot more computing power so now we've completed the basic in, uh, code where we have imported all the libraries that we will need now let's look at another concept that is very important in this to, uh, in this example uh, or to solve card pool so now let's look at replay memory so what is replay memory it is a technique used in reinforcement learning to store and manage the experience of an agent during training the idea is to store the agent's experiences as a sequence of state action reward next state tuples so basically we have these four values which are collected as the agent interacts with the environment. During training, these experiences are used to update the agent's policy and value function. So basically, this is uh, the, we collect all the actions performed by our agent. Now let's look at the, uh, what the importance of re, uh, replay memory. The replay memory allows the agent to learn from past experiences by randomly sampling a batch of experiences from the memory buffer rather than just learning from the most recent experience so it's like the uh, uh so we instead of just learning from our recent experience we take a sample of all the past experiences and uh, make a decision based on that this helps us to reduce the correlation between subsequent experiences which can improve the stability and convergence of the learning algorithm in addition by storing experiences in a buffer the agent can reuse past experiences to update its policy and value function multiple times, which can further improve learning efficiency. The replay memory is typically implemented as a fixed size buffer or queue that stores the most recent experiences. When the buffer is full, new experiences override the oldest experiences in the buffer. During training, a batch of experiences is randomly sampled from the buffer and used to update the agent's policy and value function. This process is repeated iteratively until the agent converges to an optimal policy. So basically this is an example. It's a basic thing. It's a very basic concept. We store all of the training data until the queue is full and uh, the buffer memory that we have, we'll keep using it as we go ahead. Yeah, that's the concept. Now let's look at how we'll use the concept of replay memory in uh, to implement our dqn algorithm so what what we'll do is let's understand that so we'll store the transitions that the agent observes allowing us to reuse this data later by sampling from it randomly the transitions that build up a batch are decorrelated it has been shown that this greatly stabilizes and improves the dqn training procedure so now let's also understand how we will implement this in code so we'll have two classes one is the first will be transition class. It is a named tuple representing a single transition in our environment. Basically, this is our sample input. So this will be uh, represent one state. It essentially maps state action pairs to the next state reward result with the state being the screen difference image as described later on. Now next will be the replay class, a cyclic buffer of bounded size that holds the transitions observed recently. It also implements a dot sample method for selecting a random batch of transitions for training. Let's implement our replay memory class. So the first will be the transition state that we have, which is a tuple. It is the named tuple by the name of transition. And then we'll have a state action next state 
and reward. Yeah, this is done. We have to close it. Yeah, so basically, this is our transaction tuple. Now, let's also create our class which is the replay memory class. So, it will be a class we called replay memory with an object. Let's do def underscore underscore init self comma capacity and then we'll have self dot memory so basically this will return the mem full memory buffer so it is equal to a deck i don't know how you pronounce it but i pronounce it as deck it could be called as deq also depending on the accent here max length is equal to capacity so basically this is our max length after that it, it will overflow and then we'll reset it diff push so we'll push one transition into this memory so basically this is the memory we'll have self comma args so we'll pass some arguments as well so basically it will just also comment okay save oh, so i think it is double so yeah i forgot save a transition save a transition and let's do yeah self dot memory dot append transition star arcs so yeah it is done single code okay so basically this will append to our memory buffer let's create another method of the sample this method will help us sample our buffer memory buffer memory we'll have self comma batch size so we'll have a capacity and the batch size so it, the capacity could be 50 and the batch size could be 10 so this is how it will be let's do return random dot sample okay self dot memory comma batch size also define underscore underscore length will give us the length of the buffer at any point return length of self dot memory So yeah, I think we have done it. Now uh, we've completed. Let's also walk through the code again. So we have defined the transition tuple and replay memory class. Now we have four fields here: state, action, next state, and I think I need to do it like this. Yeah, rewards. Oh, I think it is reward. Yeah, Mister spelling mistake. And we will have uh, the class as well. So we'll have the push method. This method takes in a state which is state action next state tuple as it input and creates a transition object from it and appends it to the deck if the deck is already at maximum capacity the oldest element in the deck is removed so this is how the append method works let's look at the sample method this method randomly samples a batch of batch size which is the batch size parameter that we have passed experiences from the deck and returns them as a list so this is the sampling method Let's look at the length method. This method returns the current length of the deck. Now, let's understand the DQN algorithm in detail and how we will use the algorithm to solve the card pole problem. So, it is a reinforcement learning algorithm that uses deep neural networks to approximate the Q function in a Q learning algorithm. So, in short, basically it is that. But we need to understand the steps involved to solve the card pole environment. So, let's look at that as well. First, we need to initialize the Q network with random weights. The second is sample an action using an epsilon greedy policy. Basically, we have covered this in our uh, blackjack tutorial, which selects the action with the highest Q value with probability 1 minus epsilon and a random action with a probability epsilon. 
execute the action and observe the next state and reward store the experience tuple in a replay buffer so we have implemented the class already sample a mini batch of experiences from the replay buffer we have already created the method for that compute the queue target values for the mini batch using the bellman equation so basically this is how we calculate the tq value i'll explain to you uh, when we write the code compute the queue values for the mini batch using the current queue network so we'll have that value and we just need to compute the q value for that compute the loss between the q values and the tar q target values and update the q network parameters using gradient descent and we'll keep doing these steps until uh, we reach convergence or we reach a fixed number of episodes so i i'll uh, explain in detail what uh, what we are going to do uh, to get the end of the cut pole the dqn algorithm uses a target network to stabilize the training process the target network is a copy of the q network that is updated less frequently than the q network this helps to prevent the q values from oscillating during training so that's what happened in our blackjack uh, when we were solving blackjack in card pole environment the dqn algorithm learns to balance the pole on the cart by moving the cart left or right the q network takes the state of the environment as input and outputs the q values for each possible action the dqn algorithm learns to maximize the q values by updating the q network parameters using gradient descent with enough training the dqn algorithm can learn to balance the pole on the cart for extended periods of time so basically this is all the steps involved and how we are going to solve the cart pole uh, example the uh, we are going to balance out the cart pole for a very extended period of time now let's uh, go to our queue network so let's write some notes here so our model will be a convolutional neural network it will take uh, the difference between the current and the previous screen patches it will have two outputs representing q s comma left and q s comma right where s is the input to the network the in effect the network is trying to predict the expected return of taking each action given the current input so basically this is our q network this is the full implementation we'll have two uh, outputs and the network is trying to predict the expected return of taking each action given the current input now let's implement our dqn class let's write the class here let's write class dqn and write nn dot module yeah so then let's do def underscore underscore init underscore underscore self comma n underscore observations comma n underscore actions so i'll explain to you in detail let's just complete the class first and then we'll write the comments as well so it will be very easy to understand we self dot underscore underscore in it self dot we'll have three layers let's do all the three layers here two three is equal to n n dot linear n underscore observations 128 so we'll have the size as a 128 let's do that so we'll the next one will be 128 by 128 this is how it will be now and the other one will be exactly the opposite of this it will be 128 by the number of actions comma n underscore actions so we have implemented the default init constructor let's go and define our method that is the forward method and we have to do self dot calls comma x and x is equal to f dot relu self dot layer 1x and then we have self dot layer 2x and then we'll return the self dot layer 3x self dot so we'll basically go to three layers this is what the code defines now let's understand what 
are we trying to do here? So we have the Q network, which is a multi perceptron. So let's just keep writing it down here. Multi per multi layer per perceptron. You can just use perceptron with three layers. So this is what we are trying to achieve here. Now we have what the input is. It is a tensor. So the what what will be the input? So it will be a tensor of the size n underscore observations is our size. Which is this is what we have passed here. Windows and actions is our input to the network. This is basically the state network input that is the state of the environment. State of environment to the network. Yeah. So we have it's a fully connected layer with 128 neurons followed by a, a ReLU activation function. I'll also explain like why we're using that. The second layer is also a fully connected layer with 128 neurons and a ReLU activation function. The final layer is a fully connected layer with n actions where n action represents the number of possible actions in the environment. Let's write it down here. Represents I mean basically we can just write it down. Number of possible actions. Environment. Yeah. Now let's look at the forward method what we have implemented here. So it will take the input as the tensor that is the X tensor and will pass to the first layer of the network using the ReLU activation function. So pass take input and pass two three layers of the network of the net, of the NN. Well, this is the neural network. We just write it down. Yeah, basically this is what we are trying to do here. And what we are also trying to do is, so uh, we'll pass it to the state to the network, and what we'll get is the output is the corresponding neuron in the final layer. So when you pass here, we'll get an output. We'll pass it to the next layer, and in the third layer, we'll finally return. So and what will happen here? So during training, the Q network is updated using the Bellman equation that we have discussed already to minimize the mean squared error between the target values and the Q values. Yeah, so let's look at that. Now. So now let's look at the training of our DQN. So what we'll do is we'll have a Q network which is updated in using the Bellman equation to minimize the mean squared error between the predicted Q values and the target Q values. The target Q values are computed using the Q network, but with the weights frozen and not updated during the current iteration of training. This, this helps to stabilize the training process and prevent the network from overfitting to the data. Okay, now let's look at all the other parameters that we'll be have, or I can say parameters and utilities as well. So first we'll have select action. It will select an action according to the epsilon greedy policy. We have again covered this in the blackjack tutorial in the black when we were solving blackjack using Q learning. We simply put, we'll sometimes use our model for choosing the action, and sometimes we'll just sample one uniformly. So there is no uh, steps for that. But we'll uh, uh, we'll see how we can do that now. The probability of choosing a random action will start at EPS start and will decay exponentially towards EPS end. EPS decay controls the rate of decay. So basically, this is the set of. So we do not have any particular target value. So as we go along, the values will keep changing, and we'll have to decide whether we want to take a random action or we want to take from the uh, uh, the action that we have from the buffer. Next, we have plot durations. It is a helper for plotting the durations of episodes along with an average over the last 100 episodes. The measure used in the official evaluations. The plot will be underneath the cell containing the main training loop and will update after every episode. So we'll plot this training durations as well. Let's now go to the code. So let's implement our all the parameters that we are going to need. So I'll have batch size. I'll have batch size. 
equal to 128 gamma is equal to 0. Point. So I'll also explain. Like let me just complete all the parameters first. P S start. Start is equal to 0. 0.9. We have E P S end is equal to 0. 0.05. So basically this is when we will end. This is our epsilon end. We have EPS decay rate, which is going to be 1000, and we have the tau, which is going to be 0 0.005, and our learning rate is going to be 1 e raised to minus 4. Yeah, this is our. This is what it's going to be. Yeah. Now let's write the comments as well. What is going to be the batch size? Number of Transitions sampled from the replay buffer. What is going to be gamma? It is gamma. Let's just copy down. Gamma is the discount factor as mentioned in this my area. So this is going to be the discount factor here. So what is going to be the EPS start? Let's go there. Is the final value of epsilon. EPS start is the starting value of the epsilon. Basically we can just write it next to it as well. So we don't have to waste the time. Let's just writing now. It is the starting value. Of epsilon let's look at the EPS end it is the ending value of final value of epsilon let's look at the EPS decay in EPS uh, EPS decay controls so we need to like in your space here. Yeah. controls the rate of exponential decay And shell decay of epsilon higher means the slower rate. So first we'll start very from a very slow rate and then we'll keep improving on our learning rates. So this is how it's going to be higher means slower rate, slower decay. Yeah, let's look at our this as well it is a it is the update rate of the target network so what is tau tau is the update rate of the target network and what is going to be the lr it is going to be the learning rate so this is going to be of the adam optimizer so let's look at now what is now this is the perfect time to understand about the adam w optimizer i mean adam optimizer and all the adam optimizer as well so basically now let's look at the atom optimizer so basically we've defined it here we'll be needing all these parameters and we'll be needing it for the atom optimizer so this is the learning rate for the atom optimizer so atom adaptive moment estimation is a popular optimization algorithm that is commonly used in deep learning it is an extension of stochastic gradient descent if you do not know about that it's okay you can still watch the rest of the video which is the most basic optimization algorithm used to train neural networks the main idea behind adam is to combine the advantages of two other optimization techniques adagrad and rms prop so if you do not know about that as well it's okay in the dqn algorithm we use adam optimizer to update the weights of our neural network based on the gradients of the loss function with respect to the parameters so we have defined our loss function as 1 minus epsilon specifically we use the adam w optimizer which is a variant of the adam so we have defined it here which is a variant of the adam that also incorporates weight decay regularization weight decay helps prevent overfitting by adding a penalty to the loss function that is proportional to the magnitude of the weights 
By adding this penalty, the optimizer encourages the network to learn simpler and more generalizable representations. The learning rate is a hyperparameter that controls the step size taken during optimization. It is an important parameter to tune as the high learning rate can cause the optimizer to overshoot the optimal weights and lead to divergence, while a low learning rate can result in slow convergence and getting stuck in a local minima. In DQN algorithm, we set the learning rate to 1 e raised to minus 1. So basically, this is what uh, this is why we are going to use the item optimizer. So we do not get stuck in a local minima. Yeah. So we need to control the learning rate. And for the to the learning rate, we need the Adam W optimizer. In summary, the Adam W optimizer it is is a widely is a widely used optimization algorithm in deep learning. And it is used in DQN algorithm to update the weights of the neural network based on the gradients of the loss function with respect to the parameters while also incorporating weight decay regularization. So this is the very critical role played by Adam W optimizer. Now let's so now we have learned about the Adam optimizer. Now let's learn about now let's uh, write the code for the other utilities other utilities that are pending. So the first variable that we have is the n actions, which is going to be env dot action the action space. So basically this is going to be the action space of the card pool environment. So that will be let's keep let's just keep writing the number uh, the comments as well get number of actions from gym action space also now let's do that get the number of state observations which is going to be state comma info so basically this is going to be that tuple that we talked about it will contain all the information related to the current state, the current state that we are in. N observations is going to be length of state. Now let's create our policy net, which is going to be a, a class. It is a, going to be an instance of the DQN class. It will be like this, it will be N underscore observations. comma and underscore actions dot to device so basically device is that what we have set up to do target net as well target net is equal to same thing now let's load the state dict target dot score net dot load underscore state underscore dict to policy underscore net dot state I think it is policy underscore net ah, yeah underscore dict state dict yeah now let's complete the optimizer as well so I'll just come back and explain to you everything let's just complete the optimizer also now to optim basically we this is going to be the torch method optim to be Adam W, we discussed about Adam W. I also explained to you the Adam W optimizer and the Adam optimizer as well. I'm going to be policy underscore net dot parameters. Okay, parameters learning rate we have already defined small LR is equal to capital LR. Capital LR is defined here 1 e raised to minus 4 comma amps guard amps grad so like i will explain to you what this means as well let's complete the code memory so we'll be taking the last 10,000 episodes for our memory to replay memory 10,000 will pass 10,000 here so our buffer size is going to be 10,000 let's define the steps done as well basically this is where we are currently are okay let's let's go ahead and just complete all the methods let's do the select action as well basically this is going to be 
the method that will help us select any action so if i have a state it will just tell us which methods are done so let's do that steps underscore done sample is equal to random dot sample i think it is wrong i think it is random not random and we we'll keep eps underscore threshold is equal to eps underscore end plus eps underscore start we have defined all these parameters before also eps underscore end into so we have to divide it by oh sorry we have to yeah, so we need, we need to go to the next line. So it will be do slash slash math dot math dot exponent of minus one dot star of steps done by EPS decay epsilon decay yeah this is this is going to be the equation and then let's do steps done once we are done with this we need to do steps done plus equal to one we'll increment we'll do sample with an eps underscore threshold and do with torch dot no grad so basically we'll be doing that no grad yeah we'll do t dot max one we'll turn the largest column of each row this column value of each row okay basically this is row we have the second column second column on max result index of where max element was was found so we pick action with largest yeah so we need to like yeah we need to optimize for the larger reward right well basically this is what we are going to do expected reward let's do return policy score net state dot max dot view one comma one now we need to do the else of this as well let's go there see this is the else yeah torch dot tensor env dot action space so we'll just return the action space action underscore space dot sample we span so basically this is how what we are going to do is we'll see if we want to take a sample one or we need to keep continuing the path that we are on so let's do that okay now also take the device is equal to device and comma d type is equal to torch dot long okay so i'll explain to you all these utilities let's just complete all the methods while we are at it so this is equal to episode underscore durations Blank and 
okay so what we'll do is we just go over all the methods that we completed so the n actions is the number of actions in the environments in the environments action space so which will be the gym environments state comma info are obtained by resetting the environment and n observations is the number of features in the state let's just write it down as well in the state let's do the target net is initialized with the same weight as policy net okay target net is initialized with the same weight as policy net then we have the optimizer which is the adam optimizer adam w optimizer optimizer is adam w optimizer adam w W optimizer by torch with the learning rate and other hyperparameters specified earlier. So we use it to optimize the weights. Used to optimize the weights. We have already passed all the parameters that we need. Let's go to the memory. So the memory is an instance of the replay memory and it has a capacity of 10,000. Okay, so let's just write why it will use it will store agents experiences which will be used for training for training. Hmm. Let's do steps done. It is an uh, it is uh, it is used to keep track of the steps number of steps keep track of number of steps taken by the agent. This is what we are going to start with. We are going to start with zero. Now let's understand the step action method as well. So it takes the current state as input. Let's just write it down. Input is current state and returns an action so it could be either that the action is uh, it could be selected by choosing the action with the highest key value so this is going to be the highest key value or it could be that we have taken a random so how we are going to decide so we are going to decide by this expression so we had discussed earlier that we are going to be calculating the threshold value and if the sample is greater than the threshold value and we have no grad then we go to the ma maximum or q highest q value that we have uh, that we find or we take the random one random approach so basically this is going to be the env dot action dot sample and we'll take the sample and the device will be either a cpu or a gpu in our case it is the gpu that we have defined earlier and then last we have episode durations It is used to keep track of of the duration duration of each episode. Okay. So now let's also complete the plot durations method, which will plot all the duration of each action that is taken by the agent we have show result is equal to false we have start with that. the plt dot figure basically we are going to plot so we are going to be using pi plot here it's going to be durations underscore t is equal to torch dot tensor we have the episode underscore durations comma d type is equal to torch dot float 
if show underscore result plt dot title result so we're going to be keeping the title as result else do that so we have false so basically the first time it will be just the title and then we'll plot the graphs as well let's do that now the training training graphs training So plt dot x x level is going to be episode and then we have plt dot y level which is duration then we have plt dot plot durations so basically we'll take this duration underscore the data durations my mistake dot numpy we'll convert it to the numpy array and then we'll take 100 episode averages so let's just write it down first let's do that if length greater than 100 greater than equal to 100 Yeah, we don't need to give races. Then means durations underscore t dot unfold zero. So we we'll splice it. Then we'll take the mean. And then we'll take the other view as well. Then let's do means is equal to equal to torch dot cat. It's going to be torch dot cat torch dot zeros ninety-nine and then we have the means and then we have plt dot plot means dot numpy let's add a pause so then we have plt dot was 0 0.001 was so that plots are updated and then if we have a display so basically i just write it down so that it works on all the environments if you just run it in your local vs code also it should work right so it will be show underscore result display dot display plt dot gcf and display display dot clear output weight is equal to true else the else display dot display plt dot gcf so i'll explain to you what all these plots mean so yeah we are done so we have completed the method let's now go and write some comments so basically it will be very clear for all of you so this method is used to visualize visualize the training progress of the DQN. So basically, this is the method here. Now, first we'll create a tensor from episode durations. So basically, this is the it will keep track of the lengths of each duration. And then we'll plot it uh, using matplotlib. And if we have the show result as true, then we'll lab uh, label it as result. Or else it will be training. And uh, the x axis is labeled as episodes, the y is labeled as duration. And we have a function that is called, uh, we have a variable that is called 
durations underscore t is a blue line and overlays with a red line that shows the 100 episode moving average of the durations so let's just write it down shows the 100 red episode moving average of the durations So finally, we'll wait for just a second so that the plots are updated. It will come in real time. And if we have a Jupyter notebook, then we we'll use can use this method. Else, we'll just use a normal method. So, so now let's start our training loop. So let's create our optimized model here. Optimize score model. Just let this from spaces. If length less than batch underscore size, then return. So we we do not need to optimize at the start. Then we have the transitions. When we take a memory dot sample. So basically, this is the sampling. When we do the sampling, okay, then we have the batch. Batch is equal to transition star zip. So, basically, this looks a little bit complicated, but I'll explain to you like why we do this. So, basically, we transpose the batch. And it will convert the batch array of transitions to transition of batch arrays. So let's write it down. Converts batch array, batch array of transitions to transition of batch arrays. Now let's compute the mask of non final states. So it will be non underscore final. Underscore mask is equal to torch dot tensor. Then we have that tuple. We do map. Let's write a lambda function here. Lambda s. This is not none. Comma. Batch dot next state. Comma device is equal to device. This will be better. Yeah. This is done. So let's write down what this method will do. What we are planning to do here. We are going to compute a mask of non final states and concatenate the batch elements okay and the final state will be where the simulation ends basically that will be that mm -hmm. this is done let's do the, i think we have to forgot a parameter here it will be d type is equal to torch dot boolean Yep, going to pass this. Yeah, now let's do the non final next states. Is equal to torch dot cat s for s in batch. Patch dot next state if if s is not none then we have the state underscore batch is equal to torch dot cat 
बैच डॉट स्टेट then we have the action batch let's just write it down the action batch reward batch yeah so basically this is batch dot action this is batch dot reward so now let's compute the q value now state the score action score values is equal to policy net so basically this is uh, the policy that we are planning to use right policy net state the score batch dot gather one comma action batch yeah so we'll compute the q value here let's now compute the next state values also next underscore state so which will be the final state if it is ending then it will be uh zero in case the final the in case this state was the final state so it will be torch dot zero batch the score size comma device is equal to device device now with no no torch torch that no grad we do next underscore state underscore values is of non underscore final mask equal to target net so it looks a little bit complicated but trust me when i explain to you after writing the code it will be pretty clear let's go to states this is the looks code looks intimidating but what we're trying to do is pretty simple in dot max one of zero now let's also compute the expected q value yeah so expected underscore state underscore action value i think uh like yeah i forgot that yeah we need to do this first yeah we can do this first yeah no issues action underscore values is equal to next state values values into gamma plus reward reward batch let's calculate the number loss as well i'll explain to you what all these means in the losses criterion is equal to nn dot smooth l1 loss yeah, so this is the name loss is equal to state underscore action score values comma expected underscore state score action will be expected score state underscore action score values dot un squeeze one now let's optimize it will be optimizer dot basically yeah okay, we are in the end we need to do optimizer dot zero underscore grad then we need to do loss dot backward basically we will do that as well 
let's do in place so it must be looking like it's pretty tough but trust me i'll explain to you pretty it will be pretty clear then dot dot utils dot clip grad value grad value underscore policy dot net dot parameters command yeah and then just we clip the value now let's do optimizer dot step okay now let's look at this so first we check if this is a mini batch so we have the optimized method right so this is a uh, deep q learning uh implementation that is i think what we already know so well, let's check what we do so first we replay memory so first we check if the replay memory contains enough samples to fill up a mini batch so let's write it down if check if we have enough samples for a mini batch if we do not then return nothing then do nothing okay and then let's do the transition so first then we what we do is we take mini batch extract hmm. we do extract extract uh, a mini batch a mini batch of transitions state comma action comma reward comma next state from the replay memory play replay memory now then also uh, what we do is we calculated we calculate the expected q value and it is the sum of the immediate reward so basically we have it here uh, yeah. So we have the gamma as well. Oh, I cannot see gamma. Yeah, so basically, uh, let's just search for gamma. Yeah, so this is where we do the expected state calculation. So, what we do is we calculate the expected Q value, expected Q value. Q value for each transition using the target network. Basically, we have created our neural network here. Now, if you do not know how to create a basic neural network, no issues. Yeah, so basically, it is the sum of the immediate reward and the discounted Q value of the next state okay so now and the discount factor is controlled by the gamma okay now let's see the function now what we'll do is we'll uh, calculate the q value predicted by the policy network for each transition and we'll also select the q corresponding to the action taken by the agent so basically that's what we are doing here we are also selecting now we need to calculate the hover loss as well the, the upper loss is a smooth approximation of the mean squared error loss and is less sensitive to outliers. So we need to be less sensitive. Smooth. What is the Hubble loss? It is a smooth approximation. If you do not understand Hubble loss, no issues. You can just look it up. But it's a pretty good metric for calculating the error loss. Less sensitive. Yeah basically this is the hover loss as well and now finally we back propagate now 
to the policy network and update the uh, parameters using the AdamW optimizer. And we also have clipped it to a maximum of 100 to prevent the exploding gradient problem. So maximum value is equal to 100 to prevent exploding gradient problem. So now let's go on to the main loop now the main training loop so we have completed the training part of it now we need to create we need to start implementing the algorithm let's do that now so what we'll do is if torch dot coda so basically i'm just making the code in such a way that uh, if you do not have a gpo you can use this code you don't have to make any changes so then you need to make number underscore episodes you can just keep it 50 And oh sorry, uh, if it is available, then I'll keep it 600. Else, I'll keep it 50. Now let's loop over the episodes for i underscore episode in range of number of episodes. Let's do state. So I don't. I, I think you all know what uh, this does. Is we reset the environment and get the current state and the, all the information that we need. Yeah. Let's just write it down again. Initialize the environment and get its state. And let's do state is equal to torch the tensor. State comma d type is equal to torch dot float thirty two comma device is equal to device and let's do unsqueeze zero. So I think you all know what we are doing here. I've already explained it once. Let's loop. Let's uh, create another loop now. Will we have t in count number of count here it will be action is equal to select action so we need to select an action here select underscore action false so for the first time we do not want anything we've passed the state and we want observation comma reward comma terminated comma truncated and any other parameter that we get is equal to env dot step. Let's do it here. Is equal to action dot item. So we need to take the action dot item here and then get uh, actually make a step forward. So we'll get the new observation reward terminated and your uh, truncated value yeah now let's give uh, define the reward as well we have taken a step forward now let's work on the reward torch the tensor reward comma device equal to device and we have done is equal to terminated or truncated and we have if yeah so we can either have that we have completed the number of steps or that we have uh the, the card uh, if the card pole has fallen up 2.4 meters away from the center so basically that could be that next underscore state is equal to none else we need to define the next state let's do that else our next state will be we told the tensor
for the tensor observation observation comma d type is equal to torch dot float 32 comma device is equal to device dot and squeeze zero you can take it here yeah now let's add this next step in memory so we can do that using memory that push we have created that in our class action i think we already have all this yeah action next state yeah we have the next state here and we have the reward also now store let's just keep writing comments as well store the transition and then move to next state let's move to the next state as well next state yeah, so basically we move to the next state. Let's optimize the model now. We have already created the metal for that, the method for that. Now let's do the soft update of the target network weights. So we already have that. We we'll do target underscore net underscore state underscore dict. Basically, we need to do it for both the target and the policy nets. Equal to target underscore net dot state underscore dict so like if you if, if you're finding it pretty difficult it's okay i they happen to be the first time as well but once i complete the code i'll just go over everything once again so everything becomes very clear for key in policy net i think we, we have to take this one this is the policy net let's do training net state dict and then we need to do key is equal to policy net underscore net underscore state underscore dict of key so we need to multiply it by the tau divide tau plus target net state dict key so the old value also into one minus tau basically this is what we are planning to do now To one minus tau. Yeah, this is what we're doing. Now let's see if we are done. We are going to do a soft update, and then if we are done, episode dot dot. So we have completed one episode. So I think I have explained to you what is the difference between episode and an iteration. So basically, an episode is the one sequence between a start and an end. So basically, in the cart bowl instance the start will be when we started at the initial state and then if we fall off 2.4 meters away from the center or that we have completed the game basically we have achieved the maximum uh, state that we could we, maximum number of times we could have uh, com we could have played this game so this is one this is going to be one one time that we are going to play the game basically and we are for if you have a gpu we're going to do this 600 times so basically we have to play this game 600 times let's do durations and let's do break now now let's complete it so finally yeah we have completed it. then we are going to plot all the durations Basically, what I encourage is you can just keep changing the number of durations and check the results. Basically, that is something I want you to do, and I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stick to the 600 episodes because I have a GPU, I of, and PLT not show. We're done with the card pole environment as well. Let's quickly summarize everything that we have learned. So what the agent has to decide it has to decide between two actions moving the card left or right so basically this is a video loop here so as you can see either the 
card pole will move left or right and we need to balance it out so now uh, i've explained uh, all this in detail let's look at all the two uh, methods that we have imported so we have imported the torch.nn which is used for our neural network we have imported the torch.optim method which is for optimization we have imported torch.autograd which is for automatic differentiation and also i've explained in detail what each of this is uh, what uh, explained each of this in detail as well now we have started with the import of the modules that we need also we have started so basically we have installed it and here we have imported all the methods that we need here we have set up the environment and also i have also made it such that you can run it in the google collab a notebook as well or also in just uh, any python script as well so it will adjust accordingly then we have detected if cuda is available which is a gpu now i have also explained to you what is the concept of replay memory basically it is a technique used in reinforcement learning to store and manage the experiences of an agent during training so basically we'll make use of this we have uh, saved all of the steps that the agent takes and use that to make any future decisions so we are going to make two classes one transition class and one replay memory class so basically we have the transition here and then we have the replay memory class here and we are going to use the dqn algorithm it is a deep q network which is a reinforcement learning algorithm that uses deep learning deep neural networks to approximate the q function i have explained to you the q function and we have also learned about the q learning algorithm when we were solving blackjack so we have uh, basically i have written all the steps that we would be using to solve the card pool environment using the dqn algorithm then we have implemented the class for that as well then we come to the training section during training the q network is updated using the bellman equation i have explained the bellman equation as well to minimize the mean squared error between the predicted q values and the target q values the target q values are computed using the q network but with the weights frozen and not updated during the current iteration of training now we have some important concepts here so basically this is a select action we have eps start and we have plot durations we have eps dk as well so i have explained to you all these hyperparameters as well let's go to a very important concept that is the adam optimizer so adam adaptive moment estimation is a popular optimization algorithm that is commonly used in deep learning it is an extension of stochastic gradient descent which is the most basic optimization algorithm used to train neural networks the main idea behind adam is to combine the advantages of two other optimization techniques adagrad and rms prop here i have explained in detail how we'll be using it in our dqn algorithm next we get the number of actions from the gym action space we set up we reset the environment and get the initial state we set up the number of features that we have we have the adam optimizer we have initialized our training neural network as well we have the replay memory which is a 10000 uh, buffer which is contain 10000 last 10000 episodes then basically this is the training loop i have explained in detail as well then we have the optimized model this method will optimize the model so basically what we need to do is we need to just take a mini batch so and also we will be using sampling as well so we have gone through that now we have uh, started with the training so we will detect if cuda is available that is the gpu is available then we'll do 600 episodes or else we'll do only 500 episodes so yeah this is the training loop and then we have plotted the end result this chart i have also explained in detail how, how we use this chart to understand the performance of our algorithm so now we have completed our solving of blackjack using q learning so basically now let's move on to the advanced topics that we are going that you could cover and that you would explore after learning this beginners tutorial so you could explore deep reinforcement learning deep reinforcement learning is a combination of deep learning and reinforcement learning that uses neural networks to approximate the q values in q learning deep rl algorithm such as deep q network and actor critic have been successful in solving complex tasks such as atari games robotics and autonomous driving so basically this is what you can explore 
you can uh, dive into at, uh, autonomous driving now policy gradients policy gradient algorithms directly optimize the policy function by adjusting the parameters of the policy through gradient ascent this allows the agent to learn a policy that maximizes the, the that maximizes the expected reward without computing the q values the advantage of policy gradient algorithm is that they can handle continuous action spaces unlike q learning so this is pretty interesting you can also explore this now let's move on to multi agent reinforcement learning yeah so this is pretty uh, interesting now you can uh, have two three cars in an environment and you can just simulate that and you can use petting zoo for that so petting zoo is a brother of gymnasium and it allows or it, it gives us an environment for multi agent reinforcement learning multi agent reinforcement learning extends reinforcement learning to the scenario where multiple agents interact with each other in a shared environment in multi reinforcement learning each multi agent reinforcement learning each agent learns its policy based on the joint reward received by all agents the open ai gymnasium toolkit provides environments for marl such as the classic prisoner's dilemma game and cooperative navigation tasks so this sounds pretty interesting imitation learning also known as learning from demonstration is a technique that trains an agent to mimic the behavior of an expert this approach has been used in various applications such as autonomous driving robotics and game learning in game playing the open ai gymnasium toolkit includes environments from imitation learning such as mujoko humanoid locomotion task so this also sounds pretty interesting now let's look at the last topic that you could cover in the advanced topics so this is transfer learning transfer learning is the technique of transferring knowledge learned in one task to another related task in reinforcement learning transfer learning can help speed up the learning process and improve the performance of the agent the open ai gymnasium toolkit provides environments for transfer learning such as the classic inverted pendulum task and card pole swing up task so now we talked about multi agent reinforcement learning so let's check out putting zoo documentation that i mentioned so what we can do is here then you can check out all the different types of environment that are available so for atari games we have all the see we have mario bros for multi agent so we have luigi and mario here all the the action space is defined so i have explained all the concepts here so it wouldn't be very difficult for you to start implementing these we have space invaders so basically these are different types of games available let's check out classic games so we have chess so you can play chess as well so i highly encourage you to go first let's uh, first when you understand the basics then i highly encourage you to go out and check out the petting zoo documentation and study creating your own environments and your own agents and solve some real world problems